when 20 laps to go came around, I was planning on making this video just entirely me saying, wow, that was boring, 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 boring. But then uh, caution came out, and I was like, um, okay, maybe I'll make something out of this after all. Because when, um, let me see again. I'll look at the, um, live leaderboard thing so I can, uh, um, get this accurate. So Gordon got past Kane on the racetrack, and then Kane got past Gordon again on the racetrack. So, it seems pretty fair to me. Kane got past... And then Kane came back and passed again, and then Kane was in the lead. Now, think back to about somewhere, I think before lap 100. And, um, Denny Hamlin got, um, got onto a pit strategy where he would end up in the lead at the end of the race if everything played out without a caution, you know? So what happens? A caution. So Trevor Bain just happens to get a flat. You know, it just happens to and gets caution out so that this ruins Hamlin's strategy altogether. You know, it just happens. You know, it could happen to anyone, you know, who is in the lead. It's including Kane, remember? Kane was in first with 20 to go, and then mysteriously Ryan Truex runs out of power. Trevor Bain, Ryan Truex, two drivers who had done nothing for this whole race and for the mat for the for you know the sake of the argument the whole season either. Neither of these drivers have really accomplished anything, and Ryan Truex is basically out. Well, it was dead on arrival. We're gonna say for the um rookie points, because Larson and the three, of course, were going to be the closest, no matter what happened to anyone else. I mean, you know, Alex Bowman could get a win, and it would still be the 3-42 and 42 at the end of the day for the rookie standings. No. Two drivers, their outcome in this race basically wouldn't be any different if they finished 8th or 40th. You know, because they're so low in points. They're they're making absolutely no sound in the race anyway. So, why not just tweak things a little bit, you know, for the benefit of Jeff Gordon, who won this race in 1994. 1994? You know, that was 20 years ago. Hmm. Guess who else got an anniversary win this year? Guess yet? Give you a little bit more time. Dale Jr. Daytona 500, 2004 won it, 2014 won it. That's 10 year difference. Two thousand is a 20 year difference. And 1994 was a Jeff Gordon win. 2014 was a Jeff Gordon win. I have reason to believe that this race was rigged from the start. You could say the same about maybe even the nationwide race, because when I saw the nationwide race, I was thinking. Eh, a little rough around the edges on that one, but at least the three got a convincing win in that race. I didn't get to see the Craftsman Truck Race at all because I worked from five to eight, which basically meant that I missed the entirety of it, including setup. So I imagine it was better than both these races combined, so that's my educated guess on that one. Very, very odd, very odd coincidence, wouldn't you say, that the 11 gets a winning pit strategy, but it's broken when a caution came out. Hmm. 
Gordon had gotten past Kane on the racetrack. But then Kane got back past Gordon again on the racetrack. And when Kane got past, the 83 lost power. You could say someone really wanted the 24 to win today. You know, 20 years in all. The still growing surge in Jeff Gordon fans. That surge that started in like, what, 2008? It's growing rapidly, still. Wouldn't it be nice to give the sport's most popular driver the biggest win of the season, the Daytona 500, not to mention 10 years, exactly after getting it himself, Wouldn't it be great in a sport that's losing ratings weekly, losing out on a whole lot of things, but with a growing fan base of a certain driver who won the race 20 years before, inaugurally not to mention, Wouldn't it be great to get him a win again? And I mean, you could say also that that was just to get him into the chase as well. Well, Gordon was already in the chase. It was obvious from the start of this that he was going to be in the chase no matter what happened. The start of the season, after he got the win anyway. I mean, it was pretty obvious that he was going to try and work his way in no matter what happened. But since he's a Hendrick car, you know, it's kind of in by default. I mean, Junior got the Daytona 500 win a lot more clean. Like, it was obvious he was pushing a couple extra horses somewhere. Somewhere it was getting a little bit of extra power, but it wasn't as obvious as Kane getting track position and then a caution comes out because a nobody driver that no one's rooting for, that no one's even aware is on the track, that no one is expecting to get above 20th position. Just take him out of the equation entirely, and you get Jeff Gordon back. And the biggest piece of evidence that I have for this, not only with two very convenient cautions, one of which coming at an incredibly convenient time, because, you know, they could have given Hamlin a little bit more time thinking that he was going to win this race. I mean, that would have been a, kind of a more dick move on their part. So I'm glad that they took his um, big opportunity to win the Brickyard 400 away, like, really early on. So that was good for them. So when that last restart did roll around, you saw Gordon on the outside. A very bad spot for him to be in. Because we'd seen the entire day that the outside had nothing going for it on restarts. That one restart, I think the second to last or third to last, where the inside just swished right on by the, the third guy in the inside lane was past the first guy on the outside lane after turn two. That much is evidence enough that the outside lane had not been working at all today. Pretty convenient for Gordon to get past Kane on the outside, while clearly the people behind Gordon weren't keeping up at all. I mean, until, of course, Kane got into second, and then he, you know, conveniently started dropping a whole lot to, you know, mask the whole thing going on. You know, on the last restart, I saw that Hamlin, I was like going, I was rooting for Hamlin since his um, pit strategy was broken and you know who else am I going to root for Gordon's up there Bush is up there who else am I going to root for Kenseth ha huh. he kind of Kenseth kind of ruined my appreciation from him after I'm um, winning eight races last year and still losing the championship 
<laughs> you done goofed, Matt. But anyway, then I saw Larson was up there, and I was like, Larson it is. So, yeah, basically what I'm saying here is this race was rigged from the start, unfortunately. But who really cares? It's Indy. It's not like the track even matters in the long run. I mean, we've seen Paul Menard win here. I mean, I like Paul Menard, but what does that say about the racetrack? <sighs> Toodly doodly doo.